In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to our Mass today. It's the 32nd Sunday in the Church's ordinary time. And the Mass today being offered for the people of the parish. You're going to hear today two stories about widows who give everything they have to support others. Do we have a generosity that is like the examples we'll hear about? Let's pause now to prepare. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> first reading is from the first book of Kings. Elijah, the prophet, went off to Sidon, and when he reached the city gate, there was a widow gathering sticks. Addressing her, he said, please bring me a little water in a vessel for me to drink. She was setting off to bring it when he called after her, Please, he said, bring me a scrap of bread in your hand, as the Lord your God lives. She replied, I have no baked bread, but only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. 
I am just gathering a stick or two to go and prepare this for myself and my son to eat, and then we shall die. But Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make a little scone of it for me and bring it to me, and then make some of your, for yourself and for your son. For thus the Lord speaks, the God of Israel. Jar of meal shall not be spent, jug of oil shall not be emptied, before the day when the Lord sends rain on the face of the earth. The woman went and did as Elijah told her, and they ate the food. She, she himself and her son, the jar of meal was not spent, nor the jug of oil emptied, just as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the book of Hebrews. It is not as though Christ had entered a man-made sanctuary, which was only modeled on the real one, but it was heaven itself, so that he could appear in the actual presence of God on our behalf. And he does not have to offer himself again and again, like the high priest going into the sanctuary year after year, with the blood that is not his own, or else he would have had to suffer over and over again since the world began. Instead of that, he has made his appearance once and for all. Now, at the end of the last age, to do away with sin by sacrificing himself. Since men only die once, and after that, comes judgment, so Christ too offers himself only once 
to take the faults of many on himself. And when he appears a second time, it will not be to deal with sin, but to reward with salvation those who are waiting for him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Even if you have to die, says the Lord, keep faithful and I will give you the crown of life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. In his teaching, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk about in long robes, to be greeted obsequiously in the market squares, to take the front seats in the synagogues, and the places of honor at banquets. These are the men who swallow the property of widows while making a show of lengthy prayers the more severe will be the sentence they receive. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the treasury, and many of the rich put in a great deal. A poor widow came and put in two small coins, the equivalent of a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, I tell you solemnly, this poor widow has put more in than all who have contributed to the treasury for they have all put in money they had over. But she, from the little she had, has put in everything she possessed, all that she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Over this year, we've been reading through the Gospel of Mark and particularly the, his teaching about the kingdom of God and discipleship. And he's done that teaching through, sometimes through correcting the misunderstandings both by the disciples themselves but also those who oppose him. And he tries to correct those misunderstandings. And we're coming to the end of that period of teaching and we're actually towards the end of the church's own ordinary time so we're moving into that period when there is the final clash between Jesus and those who are against him but today we've got a kind of final warning in the first part of the gospel to those who are against him but then in the second part a, 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 an example of what he's looking for in those who want to be his disciples I want today to look at that through the lens of, of celibacy. I'm sure you know that uh, in our Roman part of the church, priests are required to be celibate in order to be ordained. And I remember the last um, it was kind of few years before I was ordained, going through this, this struggle to come to terms with what, what that might mean. And there was a moment when I, I sat in the college chapel not long before it was necessary to declare it publicly, when I, I kind of said, OK, I'll go with it. And um, there was a sense of relief, actually, about a kind of liberation, having made the decision, although it wasn't going to be, going to be easy. Round about that same time, there was an article written by uh, an English Catholic theologian called Charles Davis. And he wrote it for a Catholic newspaper. And in it, he described how when he went into presbyteries where priests were living, he'd observed this, that the priests seemed to have the, um, the biggest television. They had the, the most up-to-date car, the best cut of meat. And he got the sense as he was talking to priests that they, they saw this as a way of making up for the, the sacrifices that had made of a, what would be called a normal family life. Now, he pointed out this is rather 
rather undermining the very sacrifice that they'd made. You don't give up something for the kingdom in order to have more of something else. Uh, the gap that celibacy might create in your life is in order to align you, to bring you closer to Jesus' own sacrifice. He's not there to get you, get you more of what, what else might be available in the world. Now, I'm sure that we're all the same here. We, we like to, to have things. We like to surround ourselves with what uh, makes us feel comfortable. We like to make the nest as, as good as it can be. And it's good to have the, the chair where we want it, the, the camera at the right angle, and the, the television just where we want it. We, we set ourselves routines which give us a sense of, of, of stability. That can be very selfish, of course. It can close us in on ourselves and insensitive to the needs of other people. But I hope I'm not wrong in thinking that there's something else underlying it, that we long for stability. We have a deep-rooted desire to be safe, to be at peace. And I think that, that that comes from God. And in order to satisfy it, we sometimes we take the things that are to hand, what we can hold on to, the material comforts, things we can treasure and keep and manipulate. And in doing that, we, we sometimes find ourselves, like, like St. Augustine says, we love God, but we end up attaching ourselves to the things that God has made, and we, and we lose something there. There is a, a breakthrough in Christian discipleship when we, we realize that legitimate as that longing for fulfillment is, it will only be satisfied when we can learn to let go, when we can surrender. And that's what this widow exemplifies. It's the willingness to give up the, the material comfort that you hold on to for the sake of the kingdom. When we, we try to use our, our positions, our our apparent sacrifices in order to, to gain credibility or to make us feel better than others. We should be listening to the warning in the first part of that gospel today. But in the second part, we've got the example that Jesus wants to see in us if we are to bring about the kingdom in our own lives. Let's proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. From God's words today, we are reminded that however poor we think our offering may be, we can be emboldened by the Lord's invitation to approach the throne of grace. We pray for the church throughout the world that everywhere we may be, witnesses for justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in our world that true and lasting values might provide a foundation of justice and harmony between peoples and nations. We pray especially for the success of COP26 and for the countries of the world most under threat from climate change. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this week's Mass Intentions for the people of the parish, for the health and well-being of Ivana Rybik, for the intentions of Paul Feland, and for Esperance Alliance and Luke and Adam. We pray for those who have died, A.V. Martin, Paula Londero, Charles Sakayam, and Sheila and Herbert Diaz. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this month of November, we remember all the holy souls who have died. We pray for all those whose names have been inscribed in the Book of Holy Souls. We pray for our loved ones who have died and all those who have died recently, Matthew Ellis and Lena Vinayakum. Let us remember also today the deceased priest of this parish, Father Benden, Father Cummings, Father Hemney, Father Sims, Father De Felice, Father Morley, and Father Helm. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We turn to our Mary, the Mother of God, and pray. Hail Amen. Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace. The Lord, is Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed, blessed art thou amongst Amen. women, and blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners, sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for a moment in silence for our own needs and intentions. Father, all the world stands in need of your love, and so many of our brothers and sisters stand in need of our generosity. Inflame us with the kindly courage of the widows we have heard about in the readings today, to go beyond ourselves in the way we live. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. 
Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away in your iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. To pray now, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look with favour, we pray, O Lord, <clears throat> upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honour it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. And through Jesus we've learnt to call God our Father, so we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. <clears throat> Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, <clears throat> that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us bow to each other as a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Spirit the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us at Mass today. The Fubank Collection continues on Sunday. Items requested this weekend are UHT long life milk, tin meat, sanitary towels but not tampons, and empty egg boxes for 12. This weekend we're having the annual collection for the sick and retired priests fund. At the Westminster Synodal Pathway, we've been asked to talk and listen to each other. And we invite every parishioner and or every family to reflect on their experience of being part of the church during these last 18 months of the pandemic. Send in any points that come to mind. Be sure to do this after talking with at least one other person, perhaps at a meal together or a cup of tea or coffee. 
We're going to have a gathering after the 10.30 Mass on the 7th and also the 14th of November to explore this further. And the, the memorial Mass for Father John last weekend. Thank you to all those who helped with the liturgy and the refreshments around the Mass last Sunday. The slideshow about his time can be found on our YouTube channel. you find the details of that in the newsletter and on the website. I do have a very pleasant week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.